everyone. It's Diane, the massage mentor, the teacher after the techniques, and I am here with a massage legend. <laughs> Kill me. Mandela <laughs> Pio Wagner. And she is the, <laughs> she is the owner of uh, the Academy of Massage and Body Work out in Pennsylvania. Uh, if you're ever in Pennsylvania or you live in Pennsylvania and you're looking for a school, I think you would be doing yourself a disservice if you didn't take a, a tour of her facility. Yep. Hi, Angela. Hi. Good and afternoon. I, and I had you back because one, you're local, and two, because I don't have many, I don't have any people that have been doing massage and been around as long as I have, and and I'm just in all of all the things you've done and and your school. Thank you. <laughs> I, I would like to say some of it I did alone, but a lot of it I Jim Jim Funk's my partner here in Pottstown. Jim Funk. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Don't do that. I'll never keep him under control. I love Jim Funk. He's a pretty good guy. And I and I and I love you too. Love's a strong word, maybe, but I think I'm all hey, right. I think it's a great word. <laughs> I, think. I think it's a great word. So, um, okay, we're gonna jump in and, and talk about a few things. Okay. And uh, some of these things are questions that people have asked me behind the scenes and then uh, some that I've just seen. And and I think what we'll start with is, you know, a lot of people become massage therapists and they're, they're, they're feelers or they want to help people um, and, and they want to start their own thing. They don't want to start their own thing. So I thought we would just kind of start talking a little bit about the business of massage. Okay. What, 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 what do you have to say about that just with that quick intro and then we'll take it from there. Well, I think it depends on what the student of massage wants to do. Um, we get ages from 18 on up to whatever. So some of may have already had a job or have had some type of a business. I don't think having your own business is for everybody, but it can be for everybody. The young kid who hasn't really interacted well, or I shouldn't say well, but hasn't interacted with a lot of people and they're a little bit nervous about it, should probably always work for somebody else. Watch how the workings go on. You'll learn what to do and in some cases what not to do. You know, what's not a great business practice? Um, what uh, I kind of like their policies about this, but I'm not a fan of this one. So, I mean, moving further down the road, if you decide to open your own place or, or you know, work for yourself, you're going to have a better idea on what is a good idea to use or what's a good um, um concept or what good protocols to use in your own business. So it's not for everybody, but massage therapists are generally independent contractors. So it can be it just depends on what your, your abilities are and what you're comfortable with. And I found that a lot of people will just, you know, they'll graduate school and next thing you know, they're opening an office and they're spending all kinds of money getting the office set up and doing all this like extravagant stuff. And, but they don't, they don't have any clients yet. No, I always tell my students when they leave the school, I said, it'd be really, really nice if I handed you a folder and said, here you go, here's all your clients. This is, you're ready to go. Um, it typically takes, if you want to work just for yourself, it typically takes two and a half to three years to be able to put aside the waitressing jobs, the accounting jobs, and all the other things that you've been doing part-time along with your massage business. And you could probably work just for yourself. And it happened that way for me. I worked as a waitress. I did other things. And about two and a half years in, I realized that I'm making enough money. But I had to build up my clientele to get there. And you have to build it up honestly. Don't don't go work for somebody and hand out business cards. That's bad juju. And you say good word of mouth travels quickly. Bad word of mouth is going to go faster. Don't do it the bad way. So acquire your own clients. It may take you a little while to do it. And then you're able to walk into a place. If you spend $3,000 setting up a place and then you sit there and you're going to sit at the desk and wait for them to come in, it's not happening. I'm sorry. You're going to have to do some footwork. Go and do Relay for Life. Go and do... Um, um, those morning meetings that they have um, on Thursday and Friday, marketing networking meetings. Go and get your name out there and get the hand out. Don't buy 300 business cards, buy a thousand business cards and make sure you give out five a day, every day, no matter what you do. And they'll start to come in. You know, you throw enough stuff on the wall, some of it's going to stick. And so. then too, just as uh, someone, you know, I have, I have a massage business here in Philadelphia and, you know, I employ really good one, I hear tell. <laughs> I, I employ 11 therapists. So to the other point is on my side is, well, I did everything you're saying. So Angela, you're a hundred percent right. It, it was like a never ending. Um, I was always thinking about it. I was always doing stuff. If I was in Starbucks and I saw someone go, yeah, right. <laughs> I might just run over and throw a card on their table yeah. and then run away. And, unless they were like, and if, yeah, if they wanted, if they wanted to uh, talk to me, they would call me back 
and say, hey, let me, you know, you do massage. or But mostly I would just kind of always have my eyes open, always have my ears open. And I loved what I did, so I always talked about it. And uh, I went off too originally by myself. And then I, I worked by myself and I did house calls. And I was so lonely. And then I did <laughs> massage at my house. <laughs> And I was, I was, I was the kind of person where I felt a little lonely. I was looking out my window for the next client, uh -huh. and then I'd massage people. And one of the things my dreams was was to pull a lot of massage therapists together and have them work together. And um, for me, that's something. What do you think of that? I mean, I would love to I think see. Pretty smart. <laughs> I think. Well, I, what I think though, one of the things is, you know, I think. For me, a lot of times I see massage as a community affair. We do really well around each other and we can teach each other a lot of stuff. What I would love to see is more massage therapists building that community and kind of instead of going off by themselves, um, keeping some kind of connection. I agree. And I think that um, we happen to have at our school what we developed was a wellness center too. Um, I don't do yoga. <laughs> I keep my main plate, my mind in one space long enough, but I should. Um, but I want to. I, I don't have the time to, to do it all. I don't, I have a lot of modalities as you so, you know, listed last time, but I don't have them all. I don't do craniosacral. Um, I'm, you know, I don't do myofascial polarity. There's so many things to do. And in that community of massage therapists, you can pull in the ones who have it all so that anytime somebody comes in there, you're going to be able to handle whatever it is that they need in whatever venue uh, or in whatever modality, whether it be myofascial, sugar point therapy. Um, and then you can add the wellness element element to it too, as far as yoga or maybe meditation or um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, counseling, um, life coach, uh, whatever you want to put in there. So you don't have to be at all. You can pull in some other people because we know how good you are, but as good as you are as what you do, there's other people out there like I wouldn't attempt to teach Reiki or those other modalities. So I want somebody in who is very good at what they do. And then that, that, that part of it will be covered too as well. And I'm so excited too. I, I saw that your school's going to start doing reflexology, which I think we is like started this week. Yeah. Oh my know. God. And now we have a daytime class that just started yes, uh, Tuesday and Thursday to Tuesday and Thursday for four and a half months in the daytime. And October 15th, we start the nighttime class Tuesdays and Thursdays for four and a half months. So can yeah, I'm really excited. State approved. Everything's good to go. That is amazing. So can it we is. just, for one minute, I, can we jump to the feet? Because I feel sure. like the feet are a long, That's a good long one. Jump to the feet. I, I seriously, I love my feet done and for reflexology, knowing a little bit about that reasons, but it just feels so good. The hands, the feet. And I feel like sometimes now in massage therapy, it's almost like people just are so worried about being clinical that they forget about some of the just really feel good areas that are also really yeah. clinical too. What do you think? Um, Lynn Haney heads that up and she's amazing. She, when we were first doing the program, she went ahead and did my very first foot reflexology session on me about a year ago. I know, I, I know 30 years or 20 years and I've never had it done. <laughs> a, I fell asleep relatively quickly, but when I brought myself back into focus, she was touching on things and saying, Hey, what's going on here? It just amazes me what the reflex arcs in the hands and the feet can do for you. Yes. And I have, um, a couple of students that have experienced wonderful healing through reflexology. One's mom had, I want to say, um, IBS, and she has not suffered from that any longer from getting treatments from Lynn. And I'm really excited to do this. I'm so excited because you don't have to be a massage therapist to be a reflexologist. So, but I'm finding a lot of people who find the love for reflexology then think, oh, I want to continue on and make this whole, bring all the modalities together. So, for you, you can hire somebody who's a reflexologist and not just a massage therapist or vice versa. So. Please send them my way. I, I, I just, have to. I, I just, to. I feel like in the 90s. Four and a half months. I feel like in the 90s, there was a lot more reflexology people. Um, and now you can't, it's really hard to find people who are certified in reflexology. And it's just so important. My feet, my feet. I spend more time on my feet than anywhere it else. Holds, it holds everything everything above us is being stabilized by our feet. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a pretty crazy thing. It's fun. So I'm a, I can't wait for that. Yeah. I might have to, you just have to let me know when I can come and have there are clinics. Yeah. We have clinics. For that too, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> keep me posted. I will. And then we'll, uh, we'll just go over a couple more things. Um, <laughs> What do you think we have? We could talk a little bit about body mechanics or we could oh, talk yeah, a little bit. My, 
Sorry, right, call it. Just, let's do it. Let's I do it. Am, Let me hear I'm it. I'm the mechanics Nazi. I am such a um, bad about that because I'm I'm maniacal about it when I watch them work because I only have six months to get this into their brains. Um, and I think you had mentioned to me about when people get a little lax and, and that's what happens really. I have two daughters who are massage therapists and I don't get to see them work too often. But when they do come in here and work with me, which is rare, I will watch them. And I remember the one came in and she's got wrists. I'm like, what are you doing? She said, mom, my wrists are really feeling. I'm like, let me watch you work. Right. Anytime you think you're not working well, go come to me. I'll, I'll watch the work and let somebody see you work because you get into a momentum of doing three, four, five massages a day, and it feels good at the moment. And then you kind of push back the little niggling things that are bothering you about either your hands or your low back or whatever. And you tend to let them become habit and your body actually accepts that. So then by the time that it starts to become an issue, you're past it and you're thinking, oh, I should get out of this because I'm not. You know, oh, I know. Me. And it hurts my heart. Literally find a kid up yesterday who somebody told him who was not a massage therapist that the 10 years was supposed to be the expectancy of a therapist. And I said, oh, wait, stop. Let's talk about this. Don't even take me into foreign fusion yet. But my point is, if you let somebody watch you to make sure that you're using proper body mechanics and you're open to change and, and you know, fixing how you're doing things, you'll be fine. I don't care how little you are how long you've been doing this, you can, I hope to be doing this another 10 years. If you use proper body mechanics, stop using your hands all the time. Just because somebody once says that they like deep work, every stroke you apply does not have to be a deep tissue stroke. Use your forearm, stop using the thumb, stop bending the wrists or overextending the wrists. So easy to fix. So come on, all you people who think that you don't have good body mechanics, I'm happy to sit and watch you do it. It's just, I'm doing this for 20 years and I'm a deep tissue worker and I don't feel any pain. I have more pain from crocheting at night. Trust me. And so. I, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I think if you, if you come from your hips, you know, all the energy kind of yes. gathers there, you push with your hips. And I Locked actually prefer, yep. yeah, I've actually preferred uh, over the last 20 years doing a little deep tissue because I don't need to use my hands as much and I can use my full body weight uh, to get Absolutely. behind it. So I just think, you know, I, that's one of the hardest things for me to hear. It's one of the hardest things to train people once if they haven't gone to your school and you get them, <laughs> if you get them and they haven't like they have no idea that they're supposed to push with their feet and lead with their hips. And it's uh, I, I just see so many people burning out. But and I think that, mo you know, there's self care. But I honestly think that body mechanics is probably one of the one, number one reasons why people get tired. Uh, and, and get out of the industry. I, well, I, that that and you know, business wise, but yeah, they, I agree with you a hundred percent with that. Um, it, they are not using proper body mechanics, and I don't know that if educators are not spending enough time on watching them work, or whether they're just letting them. Oh, they're almost done. They'll be. Let's get them out into the industry. Um, I have swaps at my class, at school here, so whenever I have students come in who are my former students, I always give them the warning: you can come in, but guess what? I will probably correct your body mechanics. I will correct your body mechanics, you know, 10 years from now, if you're still coming in and I see you working because we forget sometimes. I mean, I know at the end of the day, there are times when I stop and go, Oh, what am I doing? Looking down. I'm not, you know, close my eyes, get myself refocused. And, you know, after doing a few massages a day, yeah, we're getting a little tired, but always first and foremost, check in with your body, make sure that you're using proper body mechanics. If you're not hurting yourself. You're going to love what you do even more when it feels good doing it. And we have some people too that, that you know are on here too that have schools and please, please help them. Take the help time them. to do it. Uh, you know, watch the body mechanics videos. To get them to use more forearms. I've found out that there are schools out there that barely teach forearms. Not just use forearms, but use forearms properly. Correctly. Don't trade hand um, pain in for shoulder and back pain because you're muscling through. Make sure that you're showing them properly how to drop your weight in to get good firm deep pressure you should have maximum pressure minimum strain and you know on the body and that's again i'll just say it why i think for me you know like i like having a group of people because when my therapists are like oh my wrist i know right away i like can almost guarantee that when i go upstairs and i watch them work they're pushing with this part yep. of their their hand and they're coming from their shoulders and they're little you know so you start to know after time you know if your wrist hurt you're probably using this part of your palm so you know things right. like that that people when they're not around other massage therapists or they don't have someone once they leave school 
school to kind of give them support, it's easy to get off track. And when you go to take your continuing education courses, make sure that if they're teaching you a hands-on modality, it's not just a you know table work. Uh, I'm sorry, like um, note, notebook work. It makes sure that you're doing whatever it is that they're teaching you properly. Apply all those same postural keys back to whatever it is that they're teaching you because to bend over and look at something because that's what they're doing doesn't make it right. Just means that they're showing you how to do it. Make sure your body's in good uh, posture that so you can follow through with that modality safely and effectively. I have one. Okay. The one of, and I think it's part of the question that I received is what are subtle clues? Like what are subtle things that you do during massage or when you're seeing clients to help you remember, oh, wait, I need, uh, what am I, what's my body doing? What are subtle ways that you kind of bring yourself back to proper body mechanics if you get a little off track? Well, pain. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I'm not right here. Um, I would almost say pain because if you're doing proper body mechanics, you're you're not going to be in any pain. It's going to be effortless to continue to do three, four. But your first massage should be as effortless as your sixth massage that day if you're doing it properly. Make sure that you support yourself against the table. Don't be, it's so easy to pull a chair up or down, yet sometimes we go, well, I'll just get through this one with my arms up like this. And that, you know, no, switch it the other way around. Yeah, pain, I guess, would probably be the most subtle clue. I can't, I'm not sure, Diane, that I can think of any other ones that- No, I mean, I think that that's a, a or if you feel like- down. Yeah, I, I feel it in my neck and I'm like, what am I doing? Bring it up. Where it's for me, a lot of times if I feel like I'm working, you know, for me, massage is almost like a dance, you know, I feel like it's, uh, I, I enjoy doing it. And when it feels like it's becoming like work, and like you said, I feel uncomfortable or in pain, or I'm like, why am I getting tired? A lot of times I'll check in with my, my hips and kind of see where I'm yep. coming from. Plus, that's also when you start feeling like you're working, you also have to keep in mind, well, how many massages have I been doing? Am I getting close to experiencing type of burnout? Um Am I making sure that I'm taking care of myself? Did I hydrate today? Did I eat something today? Or am I trying to muscle through six massages without taking care of me? If you don't take care of you, you're not going to really effectively take care of your client. You, you have to be hydrated. You have to have be eating something throughout the day, stretching, you know, just moving your body and, you know, going into each massage, a new therapist each time. And, and do you think uh, we could give permission to therapists? Because I think some people are built for three massages in a day. Um, and I think some people are built to do six or seven massages sure. in a day. I don't know how long you can sustain mentally, I think. Not so much phys physically, but mentally. Like keep up six to seven, eight massages a day, which I hear a lot. But I mean, would you agree? With yeah. You have, you have to yeah. be honest with yourself. If you don't feel, uh, I have a mind, body, and soul thought process. Um, if you don't work with all those, if all those three components are not well with you, you're not going to be able to give your therapy, your client a good massage. So yeah, know your limitations. Um, you know, I feel best doing four or five massages. I'm not saying that to me, <laughs> but you know, if you are the person that says I'm comfortable with three, that's what I'm going to do as a rule, uh, four sometimes in a pinch, but that's what I'm comfortable doing. Then go with that. You know, be careful. You don't go someplace that they're going to work you to death because Frankly, there's such a need for massage therapy right now that they will keep you booked. And that's a good thing. However, is it good for you? Make sure that you are listening to your body and doing what you're supposed to be doing to take care of you. Then you can better take care of your client. Yes, I, I like that answer. And I think it's true. We Here at Freedom Massage, we have 30-minute breaks, and we do a max of four or five hours of massage. Fabulous. Yeah. And if no. you have a bunch of people, you don't need to overbook everybody you know everybody's comfortable they're relaxed there's no hustle i love that you put 30 minutes in between massages i have a hard time with these 50 minute massages 10 minutes to switch drink go to the bathroom what? everything else and they're starting on the next client how are you not like this crazy and yet you're supposed to be zen and and you know gather together i don't know that i could do that in it, 10 it, minutes it's a, it's a lot to ask from your body. And, and, and like you said, I think another good point is too, how do I, f getting honest with how you feel at the end of the day and what can I sustain? Because I'm not here just to muscle through and fill up my, my, my pocket with cash. I'm here to, to and I'm here to serve the community. And I think the more comfortable you are uh, serving the community, the more people that are going to want to come back. Because if you're on your fifth massage and you're like. They'll know it. 
They definitely feel it. They, they know it. Know. They don't feel sure that. Yeah. And you can't be doing that seven days a week either. Make sure that you take time for yourself and not, it's nice to go to a, week, a weekend and take a continuing education weekend that involves massage. We need to do that. Right. But do something silly that you enjoy, whether it's um, what well, and safe for your hands. I'm always safe for your hands. Yes. <laughs> Rollerblading, mountain biking, you know, things like yeah. that. But you know, read, you know, spend a day doing something that has nothing to do with what your industry is about. So that again, you can rejuvenate, not just your uh, body, but your mind as well. And so you just miss it for a hot minute. You know, I think that that for me was, yeah. like, I think for me, that was a huge thing that once in a while I had to force myself to take a day or two where I was just kind of away from it. So that when I got back, I was uh, really refreshed and, and uh, I almost, you know, when I don't do massage for a day or two, I start to miss it. So for me, that was always I was just away for about four days. And my first massage back was just big breath because I just felt really good to be there again. And you know, Jim always says it too. It's the best place to be because you get away from nobody. There's no phones ringing. There's nobody bothering you. That's almost like a sacred space. And people know that nobody knocks on the door unless there's a fire. <laughs> nobody's knocking on your door for mm -hmm. an hour, hour and a half. And that's a pretty great place to be too. Nobody's going to bother me. No, she sheds be damned. We're good. in a massage room. <laughs> So I think we covered some good stuff. We like to yeah. keep this a little shorter so people will watch them from beginning to end. Do you have any other words of wisdom that you would like to leave us with today? Um, you know, work smarter, not harder. Just take yes. care of yourself. Yeah. And uh, just take care of yourself. And seriously, if, if you're never sure, if you're not sure about how you're working, have somebody who really acknowledges good body mechanics watch you work. I'm just saying because there's some people that – have been body mechanics themselves and might not be best judged to say, Hey, no, you're, you, you can do this a little better this way, but have somebody watch it. If you're really feeling some pain or recognize whether it's that or the fact that you just might need to take a little break. And yeah, then give yourself permission uh, to know your limits, whether it be where you're going to work, how you're going to work, how many massages you're going to give. Just give yourself permission to be who you are and uh, just know that everything will come uh, regardless of a lot of those choices. So, Perfect. Angela. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for inviting uh, everyone. Me. I hope you enjoyed, and I'm sh there's some golden nuggets in this talk. So I hope you take away something, and we'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye.